here I am at my little workshop. Got my cello bow with me, of course. Uh, I've been experimenting a lot with this thing lately, just for, you know, kind of creating like creature sounds and different like kind of droning sounds. So I've got some more um, just household common objects I'll be playing around with in this first part. Um, but I'm going to have maybe a part two and three to this as well, um, where I might go shopping and see if I can find some really interesting or exotic things to kind of take it to the next level. So stay tuned for those. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and show you a couple of these props that I uh, dug up from just around the house. All right, so here's my first prop. Just a little piece of cardstock. It was a tag that came on um, a storage basket from Target. And I picked this up because the the it's actually thick enough that it's you know it won't be flimsy when you're trying to bow it. Uh, also, you know you have two surfaces here. You can bow across both at the same time. Yeah, you know, it's got a little resonant area when you hold it this way. You can open and close it, so I can change you know the pitch and the way it sounds as I'm bowing it. So it's kind of a cool little instrument in a way you can think of it. Again, it's just you know it's basically just trash, but um, you get a kind of not look at things like trash sometimes and just uh, for what they are and, and you know the most basic items can create some really cool sounds I find. Um, what else we got? Uh, this is just more cardstock. I just it's a little different probably has a little different resonance. It's just an anatomy card. It's like some study guide material that we had laying around the house. Um, this one's a little bit harder to manipulate because it, it's a little flimsier but a paint liner. So this is Believe it or not, sounds pretty interesting when you bow it. And then last, but definitely not least, um, is this table that you see here. So huh, this is actually something, again, I made like a little target run recently. I bought this for our bathroom and I found, uh, I just, you know, when I was putting it together, I'm like, man, this thing is like making all kinds of crazy noises just from, you know, manipulating it. And uh, these bars right here, you can bow across these and uh, believe it or not, get some really interesting sounds. So there's the props. Um, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I got some really cool source recordings out there. Honestly, a lot of it, I could probably just use it raw as it is without doing a whole lot of processing. Uh, although I did have some really cool ideas for some processing techniques that I thought I might show you guys. Um, so one involving a envelope um, shifter or envelope um, formation plugin, it's called Envy. And then also a new plugin, uh, it's from Unfiltered Audio. It's called um, Biome or Triad. I'm gonna be using the Triad version. Um, so let's go ahead and check some of that out. All right, so I have a couple of my source recordings imported here. In addition to the zombie growl effect, which is just something I created, you know, quite some time ago. So here's the zombie growl that I'm going to use um, as my envelope shaping tool. So I'm just using that because it's already kind of like a growl. Um, it's an organic recording that I did in my own voice, so that should apply nicely to some of the source recordings that you guys just saw me do. Um, I pulled, or I did, I edited one small section from Boeing that, um, that small product tag. So here's that with no effects. So already it kind of sounds like a little like, you know, baby dinosaur or I don't know, something like that, right? So what I can do is I can take the envelope from the zombie growl, capture it with Envy. Obviously you see an array of different parameters here inside of Envy um, that you can mess around with. So I can basically copy the pitch of the growl and copy the amplitude of the growl as well. And my air conditioner just kicked on, so uh, 
Hopefully that's not too distracting. All right, so I've already captured the envelope inside of my NV plugin. So all I have to go do is go down here and apply it. So once again, here we are raw. And then here's with NV. So it just has a little bit of a more, uh, it just has a little bit more of a uniform envelope or a more natural sounding envelope, I guess, for what a voice um, may sound like. Um, in any case, I'm not designing this for any, anything in specific. I'm just having some fun with it. So I also threw in two other plugins. So I got little Alter Boy on here with an eight semitone shift downwards. So, and I'm also have it mixed in a little bit so it's not completely 100% wet. So here's with the little Alter Boy. All right, so that kind of makes it sound a little more interesting. And then this plugin, another cool plugin I've been messing around with a lot lately, has a lot of potential to come up with some really interesting uh, sounds of all different types. And that's Triad uh, by Unfiltered Audio. It's basically an extension of their Biome plugin. Um, so it adds a multi-band component to the Biome plugin. So what you have is, if you're unfamiliar, if you haven't seen this plugin before, it's just, um, it's like kind of like a big effects rack. Um, not unlike what you would think of um, for like guitar pedals or modular synthesizers. It's that type of effects rack. So they have all these little effects units you can, you know, patch in in addition to controllers, which is very useful. So I am using an input follower as a control module for some of these effects. Um, and then I do have different effects applied across different frequency bands. So that's kind of the really cool part specifically about Triad. So on my high band, I have this glitch shifter plugin, which kind of, you know, I'll isolate the high band so we can take a listen to it. So it kind of is, it's a delay, but also has some kind of strange pitch shifting element to it. And I'm driving the pitch shifting element through, or rather with the input follower. So that's pretty neat. Um, then my mid band, I didn't do a whole lot here. Just added a little saturation. Just kind of, you know, sweeten it up a little bit. So here's both the mid and the high bands. All right. And then I'll put my low, low band on there. Low band, I have a pitch shifter, which I've got the input follower driving the pitch shift from negative 24, probably up to somewhere around negative 12. And I've also got this blended in, so it's not 100% wet. So you got, you know, 39% in. So that's, this is kind of like the finished effect right here. So uh, I suppose that's about it um, for now. Again, I'm gonna follow up with this video. I'm gonna do a part two, probably, um, you know, tackle some more exotic props. Uh, you know, gonna go to the store, see if there's anything cool or interesting I can pick up to work with. So uh, until then, uh, oh, also I'm gonna put out a free collection of sounds. So just some of those source recordings you're listening to, I'll put out a small collection of those that you guys can, if you wanna download and mess around with, um, there's, I'm sure you could do a lot of really interesting things with them uh, and feel free to share if you do. So um, take care and I will see you next time.